That's it. <laughs> I'll be a little bit more specific. Please. One of your partners used to be a superintendent here. Right. Yes. And what role will he play in the process? Probably the only thing he would do is when we have some candidates, we might say, do you know anything about this person's background? Um, because he knows people all over the state. Who are some of the people we could talk to to find out about this person? So we use each other in terms of finding other folks in previous districts a person might be in to be able to talk to them. But that would be the role that he would play. We've had a couple of searches, frankly, in the past where a superintendent in our group had been the superintendent and sometimes the board said, we'd really like that person not to be involved because they were worried about bias and we said they won't be involved. We won't even talk to them about this and just say, you're out of this one entirely. So. And given your direction, um, at, at the most, that partner wouldn't be any more involved than any of the other nine right. uh, at, the, at the highest level. But if you directed us not to have any involvement, that's what we do. For sure. Uh, community um, forums bringing the top two or three candidates to the community for an interview open forum. What's your company's position on something like that? We believe very firmly in a confidential search, which means the board selects the candidates to interview and the board interviews the candidates. A uh, couple of reasons for that, a couple of real significant reasons for that. One is we believe our job is to bring you the very best candidates. If, if people are going to be part of a public forum, they won't apply. And we have endless uh, examples of that. Um, and um, the other thing is a philosophical position that we have, and that is the board was elected to do this very important job of selecting a superintendent, of evaluating the superintendent, and keeping or not keeping the superintendent. And we don't think that that should be delegated. The candidates want to know who it is that they're really working for, and that's you. Um, but fundamentally, if it's not a confidential search, and I can give you very specific examples, some top people will not apply. Part, not just because of their own careers, but because they don't want to hurt the district that they're in. Because if somebody thinks they're applying for something, the turmoil <coughs> starts. Oh, is somebody leaving and whatever. And one particular example I'll give you, which is illustrative, is a superintendent who was very interested in this, a district that we were doing, but said, we're in the middle of a bond election. If my name gets out, I'll withdraw because I don't want anything to hurt this bond from passing. So it was about trying to protect that district that he was in currently, and then all, but also still interested in the new district. If we wanted to have a community forum for the top two or three, should we even think about hiring you? No. Thank you. Appreciate that very much. Uh, one other thing, uh, compensation package. Will you give, give us guidance as to what a proper compensation package might be for candidates? Absolutely. We can give you comparatives and what's going on traditionally. Uh, yes, absolutely. Thank you. Ms. Parker. Thank you. Um, and thank you, fellow board members, the, and, and you, because you answered a lot of the questions that we had, um, and I appreciate that, that you did that right in your presentation. A um, couple of questions. Um, one is how you handle the references in a little bit more detail. Um, do the references from candidates, do they come to, to you and to the board from the candidate themselves? Um, and how do you interact with uh, the references in terms of checking them? Um, a couple of phases to that. One, they will have reference letters and we will receive those reference letters. We will also call a number of people that are not on the reference letters. And we may call the people on the reference letter for clarification. But in the packet, you will, you will get two things. You will get their letters of reference that they chose. But there's always the question, who did they ask for letters of reference, of course. Uh, so we make sure that we ask other people, lots of other people, that know and have worked with the person for references. We put those in, in a confidential packet, and you get that. So we share that with you so that you know how that's happening. It's all private, it's all confidential, and, but you'll get those two types of references on candidates. We also will bring you data if, if in our LexisNexis search you get a little better profile of the person because there are articles about that person's achievements or any issues that may have come up in the district, we'll bring you those as well. So you'll see you know, a nice little book on what the candidates have done, what people say they've done, uh, et cetera. 
Um, and another question, uh, just going into a little bit more detail. Locally, uh, you've worked with Montecito, Goleta, Santa Maria, Santa Inez. Um, I know that there are specific board members that may or may not eventually, you know, in the long term, like their hires, but everybody's been very positive about the process with you. Um, Ms. Limon was asking about your, your, your one-year guarantee. Do you have a specific example of um, a hire that didn't go well and how exactly you handled it? Unfortunately. Um, it was uh, a district that after about six months, it looked like it was not going to be a match. And it was something that nobody could have predicted and everybody was shocked by. And so there was a separation agreement and we went back and helped them find another superintendent uh, for no cost. And um, that superintendent has been there seven years. Okay. Okay, I think many of my questions have already been asked and answered. Um, so I'm just gonna follow up on, on maybe a couple. You talked about your, um, process that you would use in helping to do outreach and recruitment for a diverse pool of candidates. How successful have you been in placing, in actually um, accomplishing diverse hires? Uh, we've been very successful. We have a number that we've placed uh, in, in different districts, uh, two in the LA area in the last uh, year or so um, that were diverse uh, the year before, one in, in, in Temple City. Um, we've had we've had good luck with that. We have a whole list of that. Of you know, if we uh, we don't have the report in front of us, but quite a few. We've had great luck. And one of the things that we really do, um, if you want someone uh, of diverse background, in addition to the groups that kind of have uh, their focus on that, is we work with county superintendents. We'll call the county superintendents, and they typically know all the superintendents in their county, and we'll say, just and confidentially ask, is there anyone that you believe is one of your strong uh, players, uh, leaders in the, in the county, and uh, that are that is you know of a different uh, ethnic background or race or whatever you choose, but somebody that would would fit well based on the profile. So we've had great luck with that, and the the pool isn't as great as you well know as we'd like it to be. So we knock on every door and make sure that we do that. We're well, we've done that recently quite a, quite a bit, in fact, because there isn't you know districts that have high ELL populations want someone that they believe can relate to their community and uh, sometimes they want someone that's Hispanic uh, or Latino and so we will we'll do that recruitment. Anything else for you? And we have, then there are many, many more that were applicants that the board did not select. So there's a difference between those that were selected in the applicant pool, which is broader, of course. Um, but we also um, really believe that we're going to bring you the very best candidates regardless of anything else that match the profile and that that's our number one job for you. Great. And then you, I also want to follow up on something that you mentioned. You talked about the site visit and I um, inferred from what you were saying that you recommend a site visit for just the top candidate that we find. Um, so then if the site visit were to prove unsatisfactory, we would then look at or uh, initiate a site visit for our next candidate, et cetera? You might. It would depend on where you ended up in terms of the finalists, and that would be something that we would have to discuss. And actually, that site visit is a confirming visit um, so that you can be comfortable that everything that you think is what is actually happening. And our experience has been that boards come back even more excited than before because they've talked to people who've worked with them and so on. And we have not had any that have not worked out in all of our searches. There was one um, where the board was still split and the finalist uh, said they would not take it on a split vote. So that was, uh, so the finalist withdrew in that situation. But, um, but we, we, depending on how you got to that finalist and who else was still in the pool and so on, then would determine what your next steps would be. If I can just follow up on that. Um, I have been on site visits where it seemed like things were going extremely well and then ultimately the hire did not work out. Um, do you work with boards to help, uh, for lack of a better term, train us on 
how to conduct a site visit mm -hmm. so that it is um, effective? Absolutely. Well, we, you know, we, we recognize that if the candidate lines up the people you're going to talk to and you don't get to talk to a diverse group of different people from different roles, you, you're just going to get one story. So we will work with you on making sure that the group that you're going to visit is the right group. We also encourage you if, you, if you choose to, to go away from the formal meeting, talk to anyone that, that you can on that site visit to make sure you have all the information that you need. So it isn't just that one piece of information that you're getting. But we do orient you and train you on how that is and work with the candidate and you to make sure that it, that the right group is there that really gives you the information that you need. And one other piece that kind of goes back to the question about the community involvement, and that is if you choose, you could bring members, a couple members of the community that represent certain kinds of groups. You'd want to be sure who it was that they were representing, whether it was the PTA council or something like that. Sometimes boards take the head of the teachers association or the classified association. That's up to you, and we don't go on that visit you would go on that visit to do your confirming. We would help you set it up, but we wouldn't be there because it's your confirming visit, and you can take whoever you'd like to take on that visit. Okay, thank you very much. Any additional questions? Ms. Um, I may have missed this, but what's the average applicant pool size that you have, what, that you might expect? Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. um, it varies, but mm -hmm. um, I would say for your size of district, if you had 20 applicants, that would be a lot at this point. Because the larger the district, probably a little bit smaller the pool uh, tends to be. Because you need to have more kind of experiences in a variety of situations in larger, you know, smaller, larger districts to be able to deal with the district your size with the complexity of it. Um, but that's where the recruiting is so important because it's less important how many is to what the quality of the pool is. And if you just left it to advertising, the quality of the pool would be much less than it would be by going out and targeting people. Thank you. I'll give you an example. Mm -hmm. uh, a district in San Diego County uh, just did their search on EdJoin. They had 80-some applicants, but it, they weren't people that were really qualified to be a superintendent because anybody could apply. So you, and anybody can apply for this as well, but they know that it's serious business and they better have the qualities of a superintendent because if you just put it out there, there are people, especially even outside of education, that maybe have run companies and believe, hey, I can run that district. What's the size of their budget? Okay, I can do, I did that with my company. That's a non-traditional candidate. And if there are good ones, we'd want to bring them to you if you chose to, to see that, but you'll get a lot of those kinds of people charter school leaders that will apply for the superintendency when it's just out publicly. So that's where the recruitment and making sure that the people that put their application in are the right ones. We don't, again, exclude anybody from applying, but they understand what the qualifications are that you're looking for. So it's real. You really get a real pool of candidates, the long list, the shorter, the shorter, the shorter, <coughs> right to be a successful superintendent. And that's a fun day. <laughs> Thank you. Great, thank you very much. Are there, oh, yeah. Mr. Heron? Uh, two things. Um, how much time do you think you'll spend in our community getting this profile put together? Well, we would spend uh, the time with you, and then we would spend a day or two getting the staff and community input. We, we found when you tighten that and focus on a day or a day and a half or two days, you get a lot more input than if you kind of spread it out. People go, oh, I'll go the next time, or I'll go the next time. Besides which, there's a timeline, because you're going to want to meet a certain timeline to get the position description put together, and then to be able to post it, and then to have your closing date, and all of that kind of thing. So it needs to be quick, and it needs to be targeted. OK. If, a can if, we, if we think a candidate has a background in special education, do you have the capability of helping us? Uh, yep. Those that are all the kinds of things that we would ask you. What are the issues or you know, experiences that you would really like to see? And you'll develop what looks like, like could anybody do this job because it's all these ideals. But you, know, you want to list everything that's possible and then you sort out of the candidates who can match these the best and which are the most critical for you. Thank you. Okay, 
are there any additional questions for our presenters? No. Okay, well, thank you very much. We appreciate your time in applying your original uh, proposal, and we appreciate your time coming here tonight. We will be making our uh, decision very quickly, we hope to, so you sure to hear back from us in a very brief amount of time. Thank you for okay. the opportunity. Really Thank you very much. Okay. So I think we made up a little bit of our time that we went over on our break. <coughs> our next presentation will be from Dave Long and Associates, and I believe they will be joining us shortly. Thank you for joining us. Good evening. Well, thank you for uh, having us come and for uh, what must be a long day for you. Appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. We're used to long meetings, so. <laughs> well, board, we have Dave Long and Bill Diedrich, and uh, we've set this up so that you have about 15 minutes to present to the board, and then we'd like to let the board ask questions of you. Great. Well, thank you so much for uh, allowing us to be here. And as Bill said, I'm sure that uh, this has been a long day, but as you indicated, you're, you're used to these. Since we have the 15 minutes and, and you have the, uh, the proposal in front of you, we're going to go through just a few of the items. And then what we're really interested in is getting at the uh, discussion and the questions and the answers. Uh, our company, uh, DLA, has been in existence about two years. And I say that because we're all doing other things. And we all came together, meaning about six or seven of us. Now, about four or five of the members of the firm were with CSBA. And then CSBA did away with searches. So uh, I was working in Sacramento, so pulled what we thought were the top four or five people from CSBA uh, to come and work with one or two of us that were uh, starting out the company. So for two years now, we've been uh, doing the searches. It is a, uh, a cadre of uh, very experienced consultants, as I just indicated, uh, they've, they've had a, uh, a quite an assembly of, uh, of experiences in the past. We've done uh, over 50 or 60 searches in the last four or five years. When I say four or five, I mean from the, that's why I wanted to explain it, from the previous uh, experiences plus uh, the current experiences. And that's very important because they are very experienced in, or we are, in process and uh, the network that is out there across the state of California and the United States. Uh, because of the people that we work with and are involved with DLA, uh, we have contacts up and down the state of California and, as I indicated, across uh, this great nation. As you know, and you've been involved with this now for a number of hours, you've been thinking about this for months, uh, you make a lot of very difficult decisions and you have a lot of very important discussions. The one that you're having now and the one that you're going to, the decision you're going to be making is perhaps the most important decision that you will make as a board. Uh, some of you might be sitting there as well, with the budget situation going on, that's the most important. Uh, it is chaotic. We all know that. But that's why this decision is so very, very critical, because that will be your partner in making decisions for the children of this district. So. I could talk about that for five minutes, but you know that in your heart of hearts 
that this is so extremely important. And we want to, uh, we would like to be a part and a partner with you to make that very important decision. I do want to, when I say partner, I want to, uh, we're very open, we're very honest, uh, and Jerry Fawcett is uh, sitting in the audience. She's an interim here in this district. Uh, Jerry Fawcett also has done some screening for us as a company. So I just want you to know that she has acted as a screener for DLA for some superintendent searches. I'm just saying that so that it's, it's full disclosure. And I mentioned uh, laying things out on the table. This is a very important decision for you, but at the same time, it's just like interviewing the superintendent when you talk with different firms and representatives of those firms. Uh, you have to feel very comfortable because as you work through the process, you're going to have to trust each other in what is said. You'll respect the things that are said in the process and working through very difficult decisions together. So it's, it's, that's why that decision is very difficult and very important for you. Just a few quick things about us, then I'm going to have Bill come up and talk about some of the process, and then we'll get right to that very important part, which is the question and answer in the discussion. We are uh, we're California based. We are all Californians, with the six of us that work in the search part of the of the firm. However, each of us have a network across the United States. Uh, we have, as I've mentioned before, we have wide experience. And we have a trail of success, and that trail of success is 95%, which means that those that we've placed in the last five years, 95% of them are still in those positions. And that's a very important figure to think about as you make the selection. We also, because uh, I guess of the, the chaotic finances that we have out there, there will be a lot of these coming up in the state of California, meaning superintendent searches anticipating 80 to 100 of them in the next 12 months out of the 1,018 districts in the state of California. That is extreme. And the reason that I mention that in our firm, we always limit the leads so that they are not overburdened so that they can <coughs> exercise high quality in working with each of the districts. We bring a full team to the table, meaning we don't just have one or two people working with you. There might be one or two leads, which there will be, and Bill will explain that. But everyone pulls in behind. We have three secretaries, and we have our network, and we have the six consultants that all work together. We guarantee our work, and Bill will also be explaining that guarantee. And I think this day and age, uh, that's, that's very important. And lastly, as I turn it over to Bill, um, and I, we're, we were just discussing this out here uh, as we were waiting. For us, uh, education has been very good to us, to both of us. So for Bill Dietrich and Dave Long and, and the others that we work with, doing these searches like payback time for us, for education, to find that perfect match uh, for a district and working with the board to make those very difficult decisions for the children uh, of your district. So with that, I'll turn it over to Bill. I'm trying to be very conscious of the 15 minutes so we can get to that discussion. Thank you so much. And I see we have nine minutes left. So let's move right along. Um, as Dave said, we do this mainly as a labor of love. Uh, heaven knows we probably could be doing other things, but uh, I had 40 plus years in education, 25 as a superintendent, and I have a very special feeling for school boards and school districts and superintendents. Still have some involvement with CSBA. I want to just hit the highlights of what we do. I know you've been listening to presentations. You're going to think, okay, I heard that before. Or, okay, I heard that before. I'm going to try to highlight the things we think we do differently for you, as well as some of the things we may do like others. I think I'll start off with our accountability to you. We're not going to come in here with a formula approach and say, here it is, take it or leave it. If you don't like the way we do a search, tough rocks, this is your choice. We're not going to come to you with a cadre of people that are some refer to as a stable. Every search we do is brand new. We start out working with you and developing a leadership profile. We talk with the community members. We talk with you individually. We talk with key stakeholders throughout the districts. Always employ organization leaders. Always, if possible, in a unified district, students. We also talk with teachers. We talk with 
We spend three days with you. We have an open evening forum where people can come. We have it in English and in Spanish. Uh, we, we develop all kinds of methods for input, such as questionnaires, both English and Spanish. We have flyers that we send and make available to you. If it's possible, we ask to get on your website so it's well noticed, uh, also in your local newspapers. Uh, we set up our own website where people, if they don't want to meet with us, they can still put the information in. We do telephone calls. I've talked with people in Germany that were on vacation. They so much wanted to have their input. And we talked uh, long distance uh, in terms of time differences, but we did it. Uh, we also provided opportunities for people to write us letters and all of that. When we finish with that, we develop what we call a leadership profile. After your input, after the input of the stakeholders, we compare notes and we'll say, you know what, uh, this is what the stakeholders are saying. You guys may have a little bit different take on it and we share that with you. Quite honestly, most of the time you're dead on, both of you. And that becomes the leadership profile. It's the qualities, the traits, the experience level that you would be looking for in your next superintendent. You approve that and it goes on our website as well as uh, school services. It would go on the AASA website for national searches. Uh, it would also be uh, on your website if you uh, were able to do so. The point is the word starts to get out. We also make contact with all of our associates and all of our consultants and we tell them this is what the Santa Barbara Unified School District is looking for in terms of a leader. Let's start comparing notes on who we know that meets this profile. And we always say to people, don't start with the individual and then look at the job. We start with the job and see if the individual can fit it. We think that's an important distinction. Um, we, Dave mentioned our network. We're all connected nationally as well as within California, most of us, except at least uh, we two. Uh, he came from Iowa and I was in Michigan, uh, except I was in California first. Uh, we, we had experience in other places, but we all are involved in national networks of one kind or other. Uh, also with CALSA, the uh, California Association of Latino Superintendents. We, and my point is, we have a broad network of contacts so we can recruit people. And we're not looking for people who are looking for a job. We're looking for people who meet that profile, who could be working now, and we're going to try to recruit them for you. Um, we do very uh, thorough reference checks. We, I think, are one of the few firms that use outside screeners. Once we have identified a cadre of people that meet your profile, whatever that number is, we do deep background checks and we use professional screeners to do that. And these people have contacts that they could get information from people that you can't. Uh, and you all know there's a little game people play. They try to get rid of people they don't particularly want and they'll give them glowing reviews. We get beyond that. We talk to people not only that are known by the, uh, or referred to us by the candidate, but then when we talk to others and we, all, we have so many contacts, we just say, hey, I know this guy and I know somebody that knows him. So we do a deep background check on them. We then come back and we report to you. And we say, here's a field of candidates we recommend. This is what we found out about them. And we share that with you and say, we're recommending these people for an interview. What do you say? And if you feel, as I said at the outset, this is your search. You know, we'd like to talk with this person and that person instead. Uh, we'll do it. And we'll tell you if we have concerns about them, we'll be open and honest with you. Now, how would you know who applied? Well, that's because we make all of the application materials available to the school board. Every paper that we receive, you get a copy of. There's no hidden agendas. You see exactly who's applying, and you're going to see what our take on those individuals are. You're going to hear about the deep background checks and what we recommend in terms of an interview and so forth. And all of that is focused on how well it meets the profile that you've established, you and your community. Once you've identified the candidate, the top candidate, and we can talk about that in a little bit because I'm sensitive to the time. Uh, once you've identified that person, we do yet one more background check. This one is federal, state, county, and local criminal, driving, and business background check. 
Also, academic records. We don't want somebody to, and it's happened before, unfortunately, where somebody has represented to you they have a doctorate from XYZ University, and you share that with your community, and somebody does a little checking and finds out, yeah, they attended, they took one class there, but they didn't get a doctorate. We want you to know up front that this is a, absolutely pristine in every regard. Once you've identified the, the individuals, then we also recommend a community visit. Not necessarily the whole board, unless it's in Hawaii, then we get a lot of interest in that. But uh, it, we're looking really for you to verify everything we've been saying. We help you with the identification of questions. Uh, we also uh, will be present, of course, during the interview process and work with you. Uh, we also, very early in the process, ask you to start thinking about contract provisions. Uh, that's an important part, and we've often met with your legal counsel. We know what superintendents would like to see in their contracts. We want to hear what you see, and sometimes we have to, you know, work back and forth. Uh, I've, I, on many occasions, told superintendent candidates, this isn't going to fly. Uh, just forget it. Uh, the board's very clear about this, this, this. And the same token we can say to you, you know, you might want to think about this provision again, or here's a twist to it. But in the final analysis, we always recommend that you meet with your counsel. That's who you really should have give the final approval to this. Um, throughout the process, we communicate with you every other week, uh, if sometimes every week. You'll each get an email from me, uh, and you'll get it so you can see exactly where we are in the process. Toward the end of the process, there's a downtime while we're recruiting, and I'll mer merely give you updates on that. But it's a, we want to communicate. If you have a question, you can call us, and we will answer your question. We'll do one other thing. We'll share your question with the rest of the board and say we had a question from uh, uh, Dr. Sarvis, and uh, we'd like to share that with the rest of you, and this is the answer. That way you're all on the same page. No one's getting any information that uh, is unique to them. Everybody's getting the same uh, kind of information. Uh, we guarantee our work. Uh, if you're not satisfied with the field of candidates that we've brought to you, we'll go out and do it all again. We won't charge you anything except our expenses, and we keep those to a bare minimum. Uh, we also, once you've selected a candidate, if it's one that we've done the background checking and we have vouched for, then we guarantee that uh, if during the first year it doesn't work out and the board hasn't changed, we'll do another search for expenses only. So that's a pretty good guarantee. Uh, we also, uh, Dave mentioned our, our, uh, con our, our ex I don't know, I'll get it in a minute, our guarantee. I've talked about our success rate. Uh, I think it's pretty impressive. 95% of the superintendents that boards have selected in working with our consultants after five years are still on the job. Uh, it's not 100% because unfortunately some of them want to retire and we've lost a couple through that process. One other thing that we do at the end of our search, and we feel this is extraordinarily important, we know from our experience that if things are going to go awry, they generally start out in small incremental steps almost the minute the new superintendent comes aboard. And for that reason, we like to get everybody on the same page right at the beginning. And so we offer, included in the contract, a, a, a leadership transition workshop. And in that, We'll come in and we'll work with the school board and the new superintendent to help them reach common agreements about how they're going to interact one with the other. What are role and responsibilities of each? Uh, what are some common values that you're going to have? What are some norms and protocols that you're going to observe as you interact one with the other? Uh, and reach agreements on short and long range goals and objectives that you're going to set. For example, where do you want us all to be in six months? You know, so we, we, that workshop we find is very, very important. And finally, and I'm going to stop there, uh, our costs are all inclusive. Whatever you see, we've, rec we've uh, quoted you. We're not going to come back and say, you know what, we, we ran into some additional expenses and we need more. Everything we say we do and everything that's included in that proposal is, is as per quoted. 
and there will be no additional charges. That's it. If we miss it, he eats it. <laughs> Otherwise, it's, it's just as we stated. I think I'm about two minutes over, and I apologize for that. I'm going to shut up now and let you ask some questions. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Um, Mr. Heron, would you like to begin again? Thank you. Uh, just, I, I know in your report you are not a fan of community forums for the um, final two or three candidates, but can you just uh, let us know for the record that that's the case? We don't recommend, uh, and actually we call them superintendent selection advisory committees where stakeholders come in and they interview. Some boards want every candidate interviewed. Is that what you're talking no, about, No, I'm sir? talking about just a community forum so the community can come we together and ask questions. Forms. We support them. I, I don't believe we said we uh, were opposed to it. We found that, that we don't get a big turnout. Uh, I think the most I ever had in a community forum was about 40, 38 of whom were uh, government students from uh, a class at the high school, and they received extra credit, and I had to sign their, their paperwork for that. It might but, be different in Santa Barbara. Go ahead. <laughs> well, yeah, okay. Uh, but we do offer them, and uh, it, it's part of it. Uh, that we've we've included with this and we'd be happy to do it. Okay, I'm talking about a forum where you bring the top two candidates in and the audience gives questions to Oh, the... that, excuse me, sir. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, we're not a big fan of that. That's why I was going like that. <laughs> yeah, I was wondering. I didn't think I got the answer. I was no, no, uh, you didn't because I didn't understand the question. Uh, no, we're opposed to it. There goes confidentiality. Uh, one of the things we talk about is why are we able to get strong, seated superintendent candidates? because we can guarantee confidentiality. You give us your word. Uh, if you use another kind of committee, they give us their word. Once we do that, phone calls are made to the seated superintendent's district. Uh, they have a pretty rough lot after that. So no, we're not in favor of that. Thank you. Uh, Ms. LeBone. Thank you. <coughs> you. You talked about networks being really important and um, the, the both of you are not California-based now, so what would you specifically do to increase the California network um, for the applicant pool? Because all states are different, and uh, California is unique in its own challenges, and it would be nice if to I have. If I gave you the impression mm -hmm. we're not California-based, I went to Bell Gardens High School, <laughs> uh, Montebello Unified School District. I am California-based, uh, and I maintain a network here. Uh, and I think we're doing a pretty good job of that networking. Our associates are involved in various uh, ethnic groups and things like that and professional organizations. Uh, are we doing all we could? We, we're always working on it, but I think we're doing a pretty good job. And when we look back at our uh, previous searches, uh, uh, we've done a very good job with that, I believe. So Go ahead. And I, I also wanted to, uh, uh, I'm also California-based. I've been here for 21 years now. I, when Bill said I came from Iowa, uh, that was in my previous life as uh, a teacher and uh, principal and through the ranks, but uh, superintendent in Banning for a number of years, uh, Lake Elsinore in the South County, county superintendent Riverside for nine years, and then in Sacramento uh, as secretary for two years. Uh, so I am also California, but when we say California, it, it's also important uh, from the standpoint of a national search connected with uh, the Intermediate Agency Association across the United States, I was on the board. Uh, so when we do national searches and the board wishes to have that, we simply go to that association and then work down through the states. So we have uh, both sides of that. Well, thank you for the clarification. Um, another question I have is about the applicant pool itself. How would you ensure, and if you could be specific, that would be helpful, that there would be a diverse applicant pool? Well, again, we use our full network of our, uh, I indicated the linkages that we have with our um, consultants and as well as with our associates and, and the organizations we belong to. Uh, and we go out and actively recruit them. Uh, once you've identified your profile, uh, see the, the profile is what drives it. Uh, and, and in that profile, you're telling us what we should be looking for. So that, uh, the, that's a short answer. Also, we teach at the university level. Uh, we have contacts through them. Uh, California School Boards Association, la da 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 da. We do keep informed. 
as well as CALSA and, and other organizations. And what I, what I hear and what we all know as Californians, uh, our youngsters come from, our student population is very diverse. Uh, so we will bring to you that same diversity in the pool. Must reflect. Thank you. You're welcome. Ms. Parker. Okay. Um, you have answered a lot of questions along the route, so thank you. Um, can you go into a little bit more detail about how you handle references? Do the references from your candidates, um, do they come from the candidate to you? Uh, do they come straight from the reference? Um, how do you handle the, the background check um, on a person-by-person -person basis? Let's say that we've identified, based on the profile that you've adopted, seven or eight people. Okay? Uh, Ms. Parker is one of them. Uh, what we're going to do is call Ms. Parker, the very first thing we do, and find out, are you still interested in the position? Okay? If you are, are you still under contract for next year? We like to know that you're not being fired and you're desperately looking for other work, if we don't already know you. We also will then ask for some references. Uh, before we do that even, we, we've Googled you, we've done that quick background check, uh, in some cases uh, other forms, but mostly Google, so that we, we look for stark kinds of things. And then we ask for references. You've already provided them on your resume. Uh, we ask for five current letters. That means they're not over a year and a half old. Uh, that people can speak to your skills and so forth, and then you provide references. And then we begin calling those. One of the things I ask you, excuse me, <clears throat> one of the things we ask you is, would it bother you if we talked with people who aren't on your reference list? If the answer to that is no, well, we got a real problem. Most people will say, no, go ahead. Uh, and then we begin calling some of those people who are on the list. Uh, Frequently, we'll say, okay, you've given a glowing report of Ms. Parker. Uh, isn't there anybody in that district? Uh, I mean, if she's done her job, they're not going to like her. Uh, how, do, how do you rate that? Well, yeah, you know, the head of the union wasn't real crazy about a decision she made. Great. Could I have her name and number? And we just kind of network and chain, chain link through that whole thing so that uh, we've talked with the county superintendents. We've talked with neighboring superintendents. Most of the time, we know people that know people. And we can get information that you probably couldn't get uh, because they trust us. Okay, thank you. Um, and um, one other question. You've only been really in business for two years. Um, I don't know if you have any specific examples of uh, superintendent searches that did not work out where you did have to go back um, within a year and redo the search. Has that happened for you yet? And if no, so... No, I haven't had one. Okay. I haven't had one. I had one... Uh, I had one when I was working with CSBA, mm -hmm. one of the first searches I ever did, where I gave the board some recommendations about uh, how to post and what the salary should be and that, and they felt, uh, you know, this is such a wonderful district, people will pay to come here. Turned out people didn't want to pay to go there. And we didn't get a hot field for that one. Uh, I wish now, looking back, and I learned a valuable lesson as my, one of my first searches, uh, you better tell the board straight up what you're thinking. And uh, they can make a wise decision, and we'll go from there. So uh, my searches, I haven't had any that have gone south. In fact, we've provided some for you. Uh, you're more than welcome to contact them, and I think they'll give you a, a pretty good uh, indication of how well we do. Thank you. Did you want to say something? Yeah, really and clearing and your throat. The, the two years, but uh, again, to uh, go back to what I mentioned earlier, uh, we were all doing searches in different experiences. Use, As county yeah. superintendent, I was doing searches. Uh, the mm -hmm. rest of them were with CSBA. So collectively, we did 50 or 60 of them. As we've come together in the last two or two and a half years, we've done about 20 or 25 of them. If there's one thing I'd like to dispel, it would be the notion that we're new to this business. I've been doing this for over 10 years. Uh, and I started uh, uh, in, with CSBA as a screener and then worked all the way through. And when CSBA said, we're getting out of the search business, we said, you know, we really like what we're doing. Let's take the three or four that we consider to be top people and uh, let's go join this guy. He's got a good reputation. 
former uh, Secretary of Education for the state of California, got a lot of good contacts up and down the state, as well as nationally. It would make a nice firm. And we also have other parts of the firm that we do more than just executive searches, as you can see. Mm -hmm. So it's worked out really well, but we've been doing searches. If we take all of our consultants and form them, it's been decades that we've been doing these things. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you very much. I have uh, actually a few questions um, and one quick comment at the beginning, and that is just, especially as we're talking about references, I was disappointed that your proposal didn't include any letters of recommendation, and I would have certainly liked to have seen uh, some of those. But um, just to touch on the questions, um, a couple of things that you mentioned. One is the site visit, and I think in your presentation, um, I believe that you said you would help uh, sort of the board conduct the site visit help with the questions, but you don't actually participate in the visit itself, do you? No, if you want us to, we, I say we you, normally don't do uh, it, uh, but if you want us to go, we'll go. Oh, okay. Normally, at that point, you form this new relationship. You have the superintendent and you have the board and they together work out the site visit, and sometimes we get to be, you know, a third thumb. Okay. So we, we, we allow that to, that's really one of the first things you kind of do together, and it works out pretty well. Great. I also had a question about, um, you mentioned that you do t up to two years of sort of follow-up or sort of keeping in touch with the superintendent once the person is placed. Um, what is the nature of the follow-up contact that you have with the superintendent? Very informal. Uh, we will meet with board members that we see at meetings. Uh, we will phone call them. Uh, we'll uh, meet with superintendents that call us, or we call them, uh, just to see how things are going. Uh, in fact, did any of you go to the CSBA conference? Okay. We have a booth there. I can't tell you how many board members and superintendents came up, and we chit-chatted, and we'd been, we talked on the phone and that sort of thing. So it's not, you know, we will watch you. We're keeping a close eye on you. It's, it's an informal thing, but we do, we take this pretty personal. Uh, if, we, if that superintendent doesn't work out, uh, Bill Diedrich, if he's the lead, feels that I failed you in some way, and that, that bothers me. So we're really dedicated to seeing that that relationship gets off to a good start and is maintained. Thank you. Um, the other question I had about was about uh, your agreement that if the uh, candidate pool, initial candidate pool is unsatisfactory, that you will continue the search with, for only expenses. How is it typically determined whether the pool is satisfactory or not? You tell us. Okay, so all we have to do is say, we're not satisfied with this Don't and like that. It. Okay. Don't like it. Okay. I hope you tell me a little more than that. <laughs> I'd like to hear why, uh, because we take a great deal of pride when we bring those. Can we're not going to bring you nine candidates <clears throat> knowing only three meet your profile. That's not going to happen. You're going to get exactly what we think you're looking for. If that's four, it's four. If it's eight, it's eight. Great, thank you very much. I think that's, I think those are all of my questions. So we have I'll more just with follow the, that up since partner. we we have asked this of other candidates. And what uh, what would you expect to get in terms of a size of an, an applicant pool for a district like ours? <laughs> if you'd asked me that about ten years ago, I'd have said about uh, 60, 65. Uh, not happening anymore, and particularly this year, it's. It is tough. Uh, Dave already mentioned how many superintendents are retiring. Uh, I would hope for 25, someplace in that area. If we could get 38 in one of our last searches, we did. Uh, that's even better. Uh, it's really, though, the quality that's included in that that's probably more important to me. Uh, I can tell you right now, you're going to, you would get, Santa Barbara will get a very rich field of candidates. But some of them are going to be people that you probably wouldn't want to employ for a variety of reasons. I also want to say your, your timing is impeccable. 
Uh, when I said uh, 80 to 100, uh, that's what's going to happen. But to your credit as a community and as a district and Dr. Sarvis, as, as you work together on this to get started ahead of the wave, uh, if, if you were, uh, if we were standing here and we were having this discussion uh, latter part of March, first part of April, uh, it would be a, a much, much different discussion. But uh, kudos to you, your timing is perfect. Yeah, just an aside, uh, when Dave and I had black hair and started as superintendents, uh, the applicant pool in those days would be about 150 applicants for every job. At least you had hair. <laughs> I guess I should be grateful for that. Huh? Times have changed. <laughs> okay. Absolutely. One more question. Oh, Mr. Yeah. Heron? It's uh, not the snow on the roof, it's the fire in the heart. Huh? Okay. Uh, in your agreement that you have in your package, uh, point number two talks about in the interest of orderly and timely process, uh, you may in your discretion, but after consulting with us, limit the number and time of such community meetings or forums and stuff. What would, what would trigger you say, hey, we, we're done, we're not doing any more? You know, in all the years we've been doing that, we've never exercised that clause. Uh, I suppose if you were to say we want 10 community forums, one every night for the next week uh, and however many days, three days, we'd probably say, gee, do you really need that many and have a chat about that? But that's never really been an issue. Thank you. Great, thank you very much. And Sorry, one more question, Ms. Simone. Um, you talked about doing Spanish and English forums. Do you have a third associate? Who would that be? How would that be facilitated? Well, we have associates that uh, are bilingual, and uh, in the intake process, they would be involved in that if, if you felt you wanted that, and uh, I understand you do, so we would bring them in. Uh, we have, uh, well, I could name them, but the point is we have them. So it would be a third entity that probably wouldn't be working as much with the both of you? No, they'd come as in closely. just for the community intake okay. portion of it. Remember we said earlier, when we come to the table, we bring a full team. Mm -hmm. We mean that. Uh, we have, we have uh, people that are screeners. Uh, we have people that, are, you know, that, that do screening and are bilingual. Uh, and it goes on. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Any more questions from the board? No, I think that's complete. Thank you so much for taking the time to submit our, a proposal, and it was quite thorough for us. And thank you for taking the time to come here to present to us tonight. We anticipate making a, fair, a decision fairly quickly, so you should be hearing from us very soon. All right, thank you so Great. much. It was nice to have met all of you. Thank you very much. You. Thank you. Yes, um, we've had a request to take a short break again, having um, kind of sat through another series of, of uh, presentations. So let's take a 10 minute break and then we will come back and deliberate. Thank you. And we will get started with our discussions. Um, I'm not sure quite how we want to uh, maneuver through this, but I do want to share some of the um, information that I, but mostly uh, Susan, was able to find out um, through follow-up on these uh, firms. So I'm just going to read you what she's written. Um, leadership associates, and she wrote, they are my top choice, so they were her top choice based on references and the fact they have the most experience with districts like ours and their networking resources. One of the two proposed associates is Spanish bilingual. Uh, Reedy Townsend is universally praised, especially high marks for no-nonsense professionalism and for skill in taking the board's direction and implementing it. Um, I personally do not think the Mike Caston connection is a downside and I would not want to eliminate a firm simply because of a few local detractors. I spoke to board presidents or members of San Inez, Montecito, Santa Maria, Galita, Santa Clara, 
last one liked the process, praised the professionalism, but a year later the board has become split on the effectiveness of the new superintendent, so that was a negative. I talked to two board members, but they were both in the negative camp. Should probably follow up with a board member who likes the new superintendent. Um, interestingly, they were hiring because they had, quote, run the last superintendent out on a rail. So that's leadership associates. Ray and Associates, a tie for second choice. I spoke to past and present board presidents in both Sacramento and Oakland, and they both were positive. According to Mimi's research, they do have a bilingual associate. Um, Roy Grimes, a former Sacramento board president, said they were very good. The district did the contract on their own. He recommends separate legal counsel for this. Um, Ray and Associates worked quickly and assembled national candidates. One note. Sacramento insisted that the firm's principal, um, Gary Ray, be their lead. He is not one of the ones proposed for us. Um, and then she included correspondence from the Oakland board president. Um, it says, in which he is, he is positive, but I did note the caveats towards the end. So he says, thanks for calling. Anyway, I can say that our that Ray and Associates was very responsive and professional. We were able to maintain confidentiality. We had a good set of semifinalists. We asked for a public session for the community on the top three, and they helped to set that up and manage it. They tailored the process to what we wanted and needed, and they had quite and we had quite a contentious school board. I was impressed that they were able to field a national list of candidates. We had hefty discussions in closed session that were very helpful. Um, probably we could have used more help with the contract negotiations with our choice. Having said that, I'm not sure that they were any better than any others, but at the time they were eager to get business in California, so we got a good rate from them and high quality service. I would recommend them. In sum, it would be an, oh, an innovative choice. This is Susan again speaking. Um, an innovative choice for us and might result in an interesting pool. The downside is lack of experience in California, except for two very large urban districts, albeit diverse ones. Both of their searches in Oakland and Sacramento appear to have netted strong superintendents, but not likely we could afford folks like that. I'm a little concerned about the contact piece. For, I, I think she meant the contract piece. Um, for that reason, and because Sacramento did the contract on their own, and Oakland says they could have used more help on this. Dave Long, second choice, again based on the fact that I was able to speak to multiple references and they were positive. William Dietrich was also universally praised. Um, off board, one board member said that one of their staff who had applied, so one of the staff members from that district who had applied, had been coached, which was concerning. There was another concern about whether reference checks, check process was thorough enough, um, which was interesting because they talked about the thoroughness of their reference checks. Unclear why HOPE was not listed. On the other hand, multiple districts had used them twice and went back to them a second time because of good experience in the process and the superintendent chosen the first time. Uh, California experience might trump national firms. The team is a spin-off of SB, uh, CSBA um, program, has bilingual associate. I spoke to board presidents or members of, at Grossmont, Marietta, Paramount, and all very happy with the process and selection and selection outcome. Okay. Then Hazard and Young was the one we had the least information about. Um, it says, not having checked references here, but not, not comfortable ranking, although the proposal is professional off the record, I heard secondhand from two districts that they were less than impressive. Um, they interviewed with Montecito and I heard Oxnard felt they did not allow board enough latitude in crafting the interview questions. Um, I thought it was telling that the Oxnard board president, who is a friend of mine, um, would not return my phone calls in regarding this firm. Um, so. I don't know what that says, but I'm certainly cautious about what it might say. Um, so that's kind of what we have for those. Um, so uh, 
do we want to start with our individual rankings? Do we want to um, discuss the firms first? What would be the preference of the board? I don't have an individual ranking right now, so, okay. uh, so let's I have... might not be helpful in that. Okay, so why don't we start with some discussion then? Because maybe, maybe we need a little bit of uh, conversation in order to help us formalize our, our opinions about these. So shall we start then with Ray and Associates? Oh. What were maybe some of the, the I strengths? Had one, I had one question about uh -huh. leadership associates. Okay. Um, you know, they flat out, flat out said, don't hire us if you want a community forum. Yes. And so I guess my question is, what is our feeling about community forums? I'm glad you raised that because that, that is sort of, I think, a, a good starting point since it would rule them out if we decide we do want the community forum. Um, so what is, what is the board's preference on that? I'm happy to jump in on that. Um, I, I'm all in favor of, of regular community forums. I want to differentiate between the two uh, the processes. And, and they were talking about a process right. where you have a finalist candidates come. Um, and that's, sort of, that's what I was referring yeah. to. And, um, and uh, pass judgment. And I feel like in the reading that I've done um, and in the presentations we've heard, um, that it would, uh, although clearly it can work, it would limit our number of candidates, and I just don't feel like we have that sort of luxury. And so I, I would not be in favor of doing anything that narrowed our candidate pool. I actually uh, am not sure that I w would like to see one, but I would like to work with an entity that is open to some flexibility and in hearing input from the board and the community as well. I think for me, um, it would, in the ideal world, I would like to hear what the community and the stakeholders want before making that decision and knowing that they're not flexible is um, a little bit of a deterrent for me. So, um, yeah. So I guess my question would be, is that kind of a deal breaker for you? As of right now, yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I mean, Mr. Think Aaron? about leaving that off the table from day one without input puts us in a, a negative position. You know, whether it's an actual deal breaker based upon what else we talk about, it's a high deterrent to me at this moment. I would have to concur with that. I, um, and again, I think maybe the two of you are saying the same thing. I would like, I mean, I'm certainly leaving for myself open the possibility that we would not do one. Um, if it, because they do make a compelling argument about the issue of confidentiality and why some um, sitting superintendents might uh, very ethically pref be concerned that it would do damage to their district to have it known that they were actively seeking another position. So I can certainly see perhaps reaching the conclusion that it's not appropriate to do. But I too hesitate to take it off the table from day one um, without, any, without having the ability to maybe negotiate or um, discuss ways in which we might be able to do it um, that would not limit our pull. Uh, and that may, be, that may be overly optimistic. Maybe there is no way to do that. Um, but I hesitate to just from the very beginning say, no way, it's not going to happen. Um, so, Ms. Parker, did you want to comment on that? Well, just in that I have so many concerns about the other firms that, to me, I think we have to take it all in context. Um, because I, I mean, it's interesting to hear that input, but there are, there are strengths and weaknesses for every single one of the firms, so. Well, since we're, I guess we're not in a position at this point to determine, yes, we want a, a community forum or no, we're willing to give it up, um, maybe we should just go back to the original 
uh, idea of just looking at the strengths and weaknesses of each of the firms. So if we would st were to start with Ray and Associates, what would be um, the strengths that we might see from them? You want to start? You can go ahead. Yeah. Can we do strengths and weaknesses at the same time? <laughs> sure. I'll, I'll just go down my list. Uh, I like their proposal. I like their survey. I liked how they create a, pro, a profile. Um, I like the fact that we would, they would have a form with the top candidates if we want it. I like their offer of compensation. Um, when you say you like their offer of that compensation? That would help us decide compensation. Okay. They had a paragraph in their proposal about it. Um, and I, I really like the way they gave their references with the school district, the size, contact information. It was the most complete proposal from that standpoint if you were going to check all those uh, references. So that, those are my basic comments on that. I guess I wasn't on for all that, was I? <laughs> Real fast. Proposal I liked, the survey I liked, the creation of profile I liked, their um, uh, forum, uh, uh, willingness to have a forum if we want it, uh, the help uh, they offered for compensation package, and their references I thought were extremely um, well done. And I liked the fact that they did have a bilingual section or a bilingual person. And they, and they mentioned it. Okay, were there any weaknesses that you saw? Uh, the fact that they're not California and that they only have two, and as it was mentioned, they're very large. So they don't have a track record in California, and that, to me, is a big weakness. Okay, thanks. Um, Ms. Lamont, did you want to add what you sure. see as the strengths and weaknesses? In addition to what's been mentioned, I also liked um, their placement. They talked about 43% placement um, are of diverse candidates, and I thought that that was very admirable. Um, I also think that um, I liked the fact that they communicated that they would be here as much as needed versus gave, gave us a certain amount of days um, that they would be here. I thought that that was a good thing, and um, I did like also that they were willing, like others, to advise us on developing a contract, and that was part of their um, services. So in addition to what's been said, those were things that I noted. Um, and yes, the biggest kind of uh, challenge is that they actually have three California, Ontario, Montclair, Sacramento, and Oakland. And I would have liked to have seen more and more like our district, so that was probably my comment. Okay. Um, I, I had ranked the um, search firms, and Rain Associates was third on my list. Um, and I, I agree with the strengths that other board members have brought up, um, but to me, there were two, Ray and Associates and Dave Long, where I really didn't feel like even in their presentation they had done the research on our district um, and didn't know our district as well as, um, as I would have liked to see in, in um, candidates, candidate firms coming before the board. Um, and then it was huge to me that they have only done three searches in, in California and that they're essentially seeking to expand a Western presence, but they don't have it, and they have not worked with a district our size. Okay, thank you. Well, I'll, I'll add mine. Um, one of the things that I, a lot of the things that, but one of the other things that I saw as a strength from them was their two-year guarantee, whereas the others all gave a, a one-year guarantee. Um, and I suppose maybe that you know, could be mitigated because if it's working after a year or through a year, it's probably going to be working for two. Um, but I just thought that that was a nice cushion. May I comment on that? Yes. 
you got to remember, I think they all said, if the board doesn't change and we have an election before the two years are up. Right. So the, yeah. They didn't specifically say that, but I can maybe infer that they would have that same caveat or that same restriction as well. Um, so you're right. Um, then I think as far as the, uh, I really appreciated that with one of the uh, people that they brought here and that we anticipate would be working with their group is not just bilingual but also bicultural. Um, and I thought that was very uh, positive. I think for me, again, the main drawback is the lack of experience in California. Um, and that, but that is relatively a large drawback because the uh, California schools are, can be so different. Um, so, uh, we seem to have looked at, you know, them pretty much their biggest downside is California. Um, so are there any other things that we want to focus on? I, I just want to point out that I also really agreed with one of the things that Ms. Lamone mentioned, which was that they were the ones who said they would be here as, as long as we needed them. And all the other firms put a, put a time limit, and that frightened me for some of the other, other firms. So, okay. Shall we look then at Hazard, Young, and Atia? I'll be happy to start on that one. And so I, I was, they were my number two firm, so I was distressed to hear um, what uh, both you and Susan had uh, sort of come out, or, or lack of information which is, is very concerning. Um, I thought, I appreciated that they had clearly done the research um, on the, uh, on our district. A um, lot of strengths in terms of um, seeking diverse applicants. Um, uh, they've clearly had a lot of successful searches, um, but, I, also now it seems like there are some you know, questions about if they're always successful, which I guess I wouldn't necessarily um, assume. One thing that I didn't like about, um, I guess, about either Ray and Associates or Hazard Young and Adia, and that was that they, um, neither one of them sent their full team. Um, and so I felt like we were only getting a piece of the picture. Um, and so that was a bit of a downside for them. Uh, my other downside was that I didn't feel like that they did enough um, in terms of helping figure out compensation packages um, and, and giving guidelines. It seemed like they left a few things kind of more up to the board than the other search firms did. Thank you. Um, I just want to make sure I captured your strengths because I think I missed maybe one or two. You, one of the strengths you said was that you uh, appreciated the research they did on our district, and then also the outreach or the connections they have for the candidates to draw, to recruit the candidates. There was some other, so a couple Well, of specifically that it was a, um, you know, they clearly have a national, um, the ability to do national outreach for diverse candidates. Okay. Okay. Ms. Lamont, would you like to yeah, go um, next? I, th I, um, I think that they outlined, they did the, for me, they did the best in outlining the board's responsibilities versus their responsibilities. I think that they spent some good time there. Um, and for some reason, though, I'm trying to pin down and articulate exactly why I wasn't convinced by them besides the Oxnard feedback we got. Um, and I'm not sure I can actually point at it, but I was not completely sold. Um, and going into it, they were actually on the, not the top, but towards the top of my list. So, um, yeah. Okay. 
Um, Mr. Heron? Uh, this one I also very much uh, like their survey. In fact, the way they break it down by up to five different groups uh, and their 32 characteristics. I mean, it was a, that was a, a good part of it for me. Um, again, I like their references. I didn't care for their presentation, uh, her presentation that much. Um, she was wishy-washy on the Oxnard situation. In fact, I, I got the feeling she was wishy-washy on a, a lot of parts of her presentation. I did like the fact that two Spanish members on the team. Um, that'll do it. Okay. If I can chime back in on this one, I, I, I also really felt with both Ray and Associates and with um, HYA that they were um, probably misrepresenting the number of applicants that we would get that would be viable candidates. Um, and so for them both, you know, when the, when the really experienced California firms are saying you can expect 20 or 25, and then we have these other firms saying, oh, you'll get 50, I just felt like that was, um, it's probably, it maybe would get 50 applicants if you do a, a you know, really thorough national search, but is it 50, you know, is it, does it end up being 25 of those candidates are, are so low quality that it just counts in the number? So that was a concern. Okay, um, for me, I'll have to say, um, I had a sense of rigidness. Um, first of all, the, as I asked her about modifying the survey, uh, she said that we could not modify the survey um, because it's already set up, um, which made me concerned that most of the other firms, and even in, in other parts of their presentation, there was a focus on really tailoring the search to the needs of the individual district. And so it worried me that there would be this survey that we would be expected to use, or at least maybe encouraged to use, that we couldn't change at all. Um, and then, maybe because I was sensitive to that, um, I was also sensitive to um, when we asked if we, could, if we would see all the apps or not, um, I, uh, the answer was we can if we want to, but I felt like there was almost a, an insinuation that we really wouldn't need to. Um, so that worried me. And then also when talking about the, the community forums, um, she said that they would give us a list of possible groups, et cetera, um, staff, whatever, and we could tell them which ones we wanted them to look at. And again, that felt a little prefab for me, you know, like kind of like the survey. Like, okay, we have our standard list of people that we might want to talk to, and you tell us which ones then we should contact rather than generating it from us. So that made me a little nervous. On the other hand, I thought the fact that they had done research on our, on our district was great. Um, I thought to come in here knowing something about our mission statement, some of our um, data was really suggested that they were, would do their homework um, and get to know what we would need. Um, so, yeah, that was probably, oh, the other thing was, and I, I really don't know where, where to place this as a, pot, a strength or a uh, weakness because I don't know whether this is a good thing or a bad thing, but they were the only one who's been, maybe it's because I think I was the, the, they were the only ones I specifically asked this question, but um, they said they would not put a candidate in the poll that they had placed in the previous five years. Um, and I'm just wondering if that would limit some of our candidates. So that was another thing for, for them. 
I, I didn't want to chime back in on that on the online survey piece. I ended up being frightened, and we hadn't asked the question of, of RAIN Associates, but they also do an online survey, and I'm sure it's similar to theirs. If you can't control who's taking that survey, then it, frankly, it's meaningless. I mean, there should be some controls. Even SurveyMonkey has controls on IP addresses and so forth, and I was surprised she didn't talk about some controls. Okay, so leadership associates. No. No, I'm sorry. That, <laughs> sorry. That was Hazard Young and Atia. Now leadership associates. Um, what were some of the strengths and weaknesses that we saw there? Who wants to jump in? Um, Ms. I Lamone? I, uh, I definitely like their California experience and that counts for a lot. Um, I like the fact that they know our area. They seem to know the area the best. Um, and I also like the fact, and I guess this goes with Ray and Associates too, but the fact that the person who the, the associate who would, all, who would be involved in engaging with the Spanish-speaking community is part of the core team versus a third party. And I think that that makes a difference um, in the type of information that we solicit and the feedback that we might get. So that was, those were all pluses for me. Honestly, my biggest con is that they, from day one, I, I don't see as much flexibility with them. They offer a package deal. Um, and without knowing what the board might want or what the stakeholders might want, it's pretty much a no. So that was my biggest con. Sorry, Ms. Parker? Um, I, I felt like that was the one thing that they were not flexible on, and that it was about the, you know, if you want to have the, um, the candidates come for, uh, you know, your, your top two or three candidates come and, and be interviewed, that that is absolutely the one thing that they would not do. Um, and to me, that, that wasn't a con at all because um, just everything I see, everything I read indicates that that's probably a bad idea. Um, and so that, that really didn't concern me. Um, I did see as their strengths the fact that we've been able to ha gather so much personal information from um, board members that have actually used them and had positive experiences. Um, and I, I think I shared last time that I was a reference on one of their searches. It was uh, incredibly professional um, and uh, exactly the kind of thing that I think that we would want um, for our own district. I appreciate that if we don't want a particular consultant to be even part of the process at all, that they're very willing to just um, uh, make that part of their conditions. Um, and again, I agree with Ms. Limon that um, it's great for them to have a Spanish speaker as part of the core team, and they just obviously have very extensive California experience. Okay. <coughs> Mr. Heron? What I found interesting is both with leadership and long, if you went with either one of them, it's because of, it's not because of their proposal. I don't think leadership associates has a very good proposal. It's all in the presenters who were extremely good. And so you're, and, and the, the, the fact that they've done so much here, they know our community, I mean, there was just a feel that they were a very quality organization and they do a quality job but it's not because of anything they uh, presented to us factually. Um, again, I, the, I think the biggest con is the fact that they say absolutely no community forum. And um, that's still an issue with me. But other than that, um, and obviously my comments from last week and it's been brought up tonight is uh, the, the willingness for this board to take some flack from some members of the community 
um, regardless of what everybody says about participating or not participating, we will take flack. And as long as we're willing to take that flack and live with it, that's, that's okay. Okay. Well, I would, uh, I would echo a lot of what you said. Um, I thought uh, certainly their, their California experience, but also their relatively local experience was a big, a big plus. Um, so that, that I felt, I could feel comfortable feeling like they knew something about our uh, district as well as our type of district. Um, I'm trying to think of, I, I also liked the idea that they talked about the board receiving a comprehensive packet of information regarding references. That it wouldn't just be them checking the references and then sort of giving us a summary of it. That they would actually give us a packet of all the information that they had found out. Um, I thought that was, was very good. Um, I also thought that the um, that the, they seemed like they were willing to help a lot on the contract, um, even though they said, you know, we don't negotiate, we're not lawyers, but they clearly indicated that they would be involved in helping to work with the contract. Again, for me, probably the the two things that um, that Mr. Heron pointed out, actually maybe all three of them, um, there are no form. Okay. I think the issue of Mike Caston is significant. There are segments of the community for whom that will be a, a big concern. And I worry that it could uh, carry over into acceptance or non-acceptance of our of our candidates and whoever we ultimately hire. So I'm not sure that it's enough of a concern to say don't hire them, but like like Mr. Heron, I think it's something that we need to really just put on the table and recognize that it could it could raise a lot of issues for us if we do. Um, and then I also think that it was a weak proposal. I think part of the reason it was a weak proposal is because they were hesitant to apply at first. And I, I, want, I, I guess I'm not comfortable with that. I feel like I almost have the feeling that, it, that they sort of had to be in, talked into applying with us. Okay? And that makes me worry about how sincerely they would you know, put their efforts into this, or, or why they were reluctant. I didn't know that. Can you amplify a little bit? Um, do you want to maybe explain that a little bit, Dr. Sarvis? Well, I didn't have any discussions with them, but uh, the, Mimi had worked uh, with the board president on it, and uh, in the preliminary discussion, uh, they had a reluctance uh, because, as I recall, uh, this is secondhand information, as I recall, because they had some notions about uh, uh, about how Cam Sanchez was hired, um, about uh, yes, about the involvement of the libertarians on how the board would want to make it entirely open and public, and that they felt that they needed work in confidentiality with the board. Um, Mimi, I believe, was successful in dispelling them that and said, you know, this is a totally different landscape. That was years ago. You know, things have changed here tremendously. And it's a, uh, I believe she said it was a f very functioning, a high functioning board. And they said, well, then in that case, we will submit a proposal. <laughs> I mean, it sounded like and, a strange discussion to have. <laughs> yes. And my concern wasn't so much that they that they had those concerns because I can understand that, but that having that having done that, 
Then I, they submitted what I agreed was a weak proposal. I, I felt like it contained very little in specifics, um, very little real discussion of what their, their process would be. And so I wasn't sure how to interpret that, um, whether it was just because having dragged their feet, they were you know, short on time then, and so they didn't put as much detail into it, or whether it reflected sort of a, a maybe a, a questionable commitment to this process. I don't know. I mean, I, 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 uh, we could, I guess we could have asked them that, but um, I just figured that different companies have different ways of presenting, and that's kind of what the second round is to go into detail on. Yeah, and I do want to be fair to them. I think I agree. I also agree with uh, the the positive for them. I think they did do a very thorough um, and clear job of presenting. So it was much yeah. clearer once they presented it to us. Yeah. If I was going to deal with any of the people we talked to tonight, those would be the two I would deal with from leadership associates. Okay. Do you want to move forward on that then? Um, our final group that we heard from, Dave Long and Associates. What are our strengths and weaknesses for them? Ms. Parker? Um, I uh, did put them last on my list, actually. Um, and I think that they're very experienced. Um, and what they do, and I appreciate that. Again, I felt like this, they did not know our district, um, and that was clear from their presentation. Um, and uh, again, this is another one that actually I've had personal uh, contact with. I've been a reference for, the, for this firm and um, had a very, uh, I'll just say that Leadership Associates was much stronger in the way they handled their references. Ms. Lamont? Um, I, what I liked was that they included in the contract a leadership transition meeting. So there was that um, post decision making um, kind of availability. Uh, I think what I didn't like is as much as they tried to uh, convince us of all their experience, it was with different entities and it felt a little bit um, put like pieced together and that was a little bit of a concern for me. Um, I, yeah, I'll leave it at that. Okay. Mr. Heron? I, I just, no comment, I, uh, I can't support them. Okay. Um, I felt, I guess I just felt unconvinced by their presentation. Um, I, I at times felt like they were giving conflicting answers to our questions. Like one person would give one answer and the other person would kind of say something different. Um, and so I was, that, that worried me because I felt like I'm not sure I'm getting the, a clear story here. Um, I too liked the leader, leadership transition workshop idea. I thought that was, that was very good. I was, I guess it made me worry because I felt like they were, when it, they said in their proposal that they maintained two year contact with the superintendent, it was stated as if it was sort of a formal situation and part of the proposal. And then it seemed like virtually nothing. They said, if we, see, if we see them at conferences, we'll talk to them. I thought, well, you would do that for longer than two years, wouldn't you? Um, that just seemed like, I felt like that was a real misrepresentation in their proposal of something that was ultimately meaningless. Um, so that really worried me because it made me start to wonder whether that could be true of other aspects of the proposal. Um, I also really worried that they had no letters of recommendation and they didn't, 
I didn't specifically ask them the question, but I told them it was a concern, and they didn't explain it. Um, especially after their discussion of how thoroughly they check letters of recommendation and how they want them to be current and et cetera. Um, so that, again, had me a little worried. The other, but another thing that I did like is that they said um, that they would accompany us on a site visit if we wanted them to, um, which a number of the firms said they would not. Um, and that they have the out, they use the outside screeners for some of the background checks. But again, that sounded good. I'm not sure, I don't know enough about that process to know if, if that's really significantly better than using the in-house personnel that some of the other firms might have, might have been using. Um, I appreciated that they said they don't support the idea of forms, but they would be willing to work with us if we wanted to do them. Um, so, yeah, I think that was, Pretty much it for me. Um, hearing some of our concerns about the their weaknesses, and hearing Mr. Heron's uh, statement that he would not support them, should we eliminate them from consideration at this point? Are we willing to do that? I would be willing to. Yes. Okay. Okay. So let's just take them off the table for now. Okay. And that brings it to three. Bray and Associates, Hazard and Young, and Leadership and Associates. <coughs> so um, I guess for Ray and Associates, we had a number of strengths. We had really only one major, major weakness. Um, we had a couple of other less serious ones, but our one major one is their lack of California experience, which is major. Um, so I'm not sure how we feel about that, or if we are prepared to remove them from consideration because of that, or if we still want to keep them in consideration. I think. Uh, HYA would be the second one to be dropped from the consideration. HYA, okay. Before, before Ray. Before Ray, okay, okay. Um, you know, no, and normally I would not agree with you on that, Mr. Aaron, but um, because HYA has so much more California experience, um, I, I, I don't know. Well. I have to say, I thought it was telling that Oxnard did not take them up on their guarantee, did not bring them back in to do the second search when their hire did not work out. Um, a, you know, so that would indicate a, a real lack of satisfaction with how things went the first time. Um, that, I, I appreciated your asking that question, Ms. Parker, because that, to me, that was very telling. It is telling, although, you know, again, when you have hundreds of searches, I, I hate to focus too much on one district, especially one where we actually haven't had any contact. Correct, I, I understand that. I would actually support uh, Mr. Heron's uh, kind of uh, suggestion to drop HYA. They were not on the top of my list. On the top of my list is Ray and Associates and Leadership um, Associates. Uh, I also think, uh, it take away the Oxnard, yes, they have a lot of California experience, but at the end of the day, I'm also thinking, who is this board going to work with, well with? And based on their, rep on their presentation, I wasn't convinced that um, I mean, mind you, she was one of three that was here, but based on that, I'm not sure that she would be the best fit, or they. 
Well, thank you for bringing that up again, Ms. Limon, because again, it comes down to not seeing that whole team. So I feel like it, you know, not even seeing a second member of the team um, is concerning. Yeah, I have to say, uh, repeat what I said at the beginning, at the outset with this one, I really just felt a sense of inflexibility with him. I felt like a lot of things were already set up, were sort of, um, a, sort of a, I don't want to say a cookie cutter approach because I think that's too harsh. I, mean, I think there was probably a little more flexibility than that, but the survey's already set up. She's, you know, the number of, of subgroups that you can divide it into is already set up. There's already a very clear sort of um, process and approach. And I didn't hear a lot of willingness to change that or, or accommodate district issues around that. So I think I would be inclined to remove them as well. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, we've got it down to two. Um, we've got it down to Ray and Associates and Leadership Associates, or Leadership Associates. And I think on these two, we have very clearly with Ray and Associates, their big drawback is a lack of California experience. On um, Leadership Associates, uh, the no community forum. I is, think we really need to be clear, it's no candidate forum. Thank you, no candidate forum. Um, you know, and possibly the issue of the former superintendent, um, to the extent that that is an issue or not. Um, so do we have, do we want to make a, does anyone have an argument to be made for one over the other? Um, I just, in this case, I feel more comfortable going with the firm with the track record that I can look at for California. Um, uh, I feel like if we were going to get a lot of flack from the community that we probably already would have had it. Um, and so far, all I've heard is a little bit of gossip and I just don't feel like I can make a decision around that, particularly when I think uh, we could make a request not to um, have that particular associate as part of the process. Was leadership associate uh, Mrs. Deacon's first choice? Yes. And Ray and Associates was a, she said a tie for second. Tie with who? With Hazard? With Hazard, I believe. Oh no, with Long, sorry, with Long. With Long. Um. Ms. Long? I really like Leadership Associates. I liked their presentation. Um, I, you know, this is going to go back to how we're going to interact with them and the fact that um, there's no flexibility, it, it's, it's a tough one for me. Um, it's a tough one for me because they spoke of successful candidate forums. Uh, I don't know that we want to or are going to choose to have one, but a willingness to listen to work with a board who might consider that and work through a process of thinking about it um, a little bit more strategically would have been something I would have really liked to have seen. And um, I don't, for me, it, it's also about setting the tone and that's, at least with me, the tone that was left of um, this is what we have, this is who we are, take it or leave it. And I would have liked to have seen um, at least some openness to work with us and think through a process that I think could be useful. Um, but again, I'm not convinced that needs to happen. I just, 
would have liked that. And it's setting a tone for um, the type of relationship that we would have with the board. But I will say that the the um, the kind of the, the background information and it seems like other school districts have been very, very happy. So I want to take that into consideration that they've expressed the opposite. But I, I want to base it on the information that's been given to us um, versus a lot of other things because then we are going to get into the, you know, the bias and all that stuff. So, yeah. Is, there, is that public comment in front of you or is that? No. Oh. Can I chime back in on yes. that piece? And that is that three of the four firms said that we would lose candidates if we did a candidate forum. And I think Leadership Associates was the most blunt in that they were not going to do that. Um, but three of the four essentially said, not a good idea. Um, so I, I appreciate that um, Ray and Associates was flexible about it. Um, and I think that you know, it could work in a place like Oakland or Sacramento, um, but I don't think, um, I, I guess in a way it almost worried me that, that well, I, I guess they had concerns about it too, so I don't want to, I don't want to minimize their own concerns about the process. You know, they said, they said they, they could go either way. I find this really a difficult choice between them because they have different kinds of strengths. Um, if, uh, if Ray and Associates had had the California experience um, and the kind of sort of uh, responses, feedback, positive feedback that we've gotten for Leadership Associates, I would, um, I would feel very strongly in their favor. Um, but I, I guess I feel like leader, I, I, it concerns me that leadership associates said um, they will not do the, the candidate form. And as I said earlier, that, that inflexibility worries me. But um, I did feel like they had other areas in which they were flexible. So there's, you know, there's, this is really tough. I don't, I don't feel like I have a clear preference on these. Um, it also concerned me that leadership associate when asked what, I think uh, Mr. Heron, you asked them how much time they plan to spend in the community. Um, they didn't give a, an actual number, they said, you know, a, a day here, a couple of days there. It sounded like we're they were talking about three or maybe four days. Yeah. Um, what concerned me is that in the contract, you know, they say they can limit the time. Yeah. Yeah, that seems like a dumb thing to put in the contract. You know, it's, it's almost like a red, waving a red flag. And especially when they say, and I forget what the exact wording, but at their discretion, I think, the, I think them, this is the one, right? Or is that somebody else? No, that was somebody else. That, that, somebody that else? was David okay. Long and Associates, yeah. David Long, yeah. okay, forget it. Um, it did worry me that, though, that they did indicate that it would, sounded like it was gonna be around three days, maybe four, um, and Ray and Associates said pretty much as long as we needed them. Um, I certainly like that answer better. Well, you know, I Mr. Aaron? You know, if we take a vote and it's two to two, I'll switch my vote to vote uh, with Susan Deacon for Leadership Associates. But if it's three to, three to one or, or four to zero, with Ray, that's fine with me too. But, I will, if necessary, um, vote on the side of Susan Deacon because that would probably make three votes. Okay. Um, do we want to have any further discussion about this? Are there, do we think there's any points that we've missed? Anything that might tip us one way or the other that we haven't looked at yet? I'll make a motion. Okay, Mr. Heron. That we um, contract with Ray and Associates. I'd like to second that. Okay. 
been made and seconded to contract with Ray and Associates. Any further discussion on that? No? Okay. Then I'm, I'm hesitating calling the question because I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to vote. Um, okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Okay. Motion carries three to one. So we have a firm, and I just hope we have made the right choice. So thank you all. I know this was a tough decision, a long night, and we'll do it again next week. <laughs> thank you for those in the audience who stayed to hear all of this. <laughs> With that, we, I, we don't have anything at the end of our agenda today, do we? Um, nope. I would like to thank you for chairing a very, very good meeting. Oh, thank you. Okay, well, with that, we can adjourn the meeting.